Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today we're going to be going over the new Hearts of Iron 4 developer diary and the developer diary is simply named Tech. What this developer diary is going to go over is how AI interacts with the international market. So let's get into it here. This is going to be a shorter just summary of the developer diary. If you like these shorter summaries, please leave me a like below and consider subscribing. Okay, the first thing that the AI will do is consider selling equipment and the main modifier here is a 20 percent surplus so the ai will consider putting up equipment onto the marketplace if it has a 20 percent surplus of equipment if the ai needs the equipment for itself it will not sell it if there is a surplus of equipment it will sell some of the equipment but not all of it so that's the 20 percent surplus if they all of a sudden need the equipment for instance you get attacked it will pull the equipment off the marketplace the ai will sell the equipment in batches so that there's not like one infantry equipment being sold at a time but maybe batches of perhaps several hundred at the least this will be modified by equipment cost and type so they allude to that but they don't quite say how the cost and type uh, will be individually modified so we'll have to see when the new update comes in special modifiers will be scripted in case of impending war such as ai germany starting world war ii uh, in that case german the german ai will consider stock stockpiling equipment rather than putting it on the marketplace. Buying equipment, the AI will need a surplus of sieves to buy off the marketplace. Construction cost of needed equipment will be considered. What type of equipment? Is it new equipment? Is it old equipment? Uh, they, the AI will prefer newer equipment rather than old equipment. How equ expensive the equipment is, the AI will prefer cheaper stuff. Applicable subsidies. So if we have any subsidies, we will prefer to to use them so i'm pretty sure that means if you're like a faction leader or you have a puppet you will buy the equipment from your puppet or other countries in your faction before anyone else scripted ai wait we want to make the content designers and modders happy so they're going to try to make it possible to script the ai into dirty doing certain trades on the the international marketplace the ai avoids pur purchasing equipment that will won't be filled in 10 months. So in other words, it will not be making trades over years of time, but rather 10 months, because if you trade one sieve for say 200 guns, and it's going to take five years to fill that, there's probably going to be a war within those five years, and that could really make things out of balance. How is market access determined? So players can request market access from AI countries, and that access is modified by diplomatic diplomatic opinion. I really like this since I think opinion is underused in Hoi 4. It makes it possible for you to achieve market access with a country as long as you're prepared to spend some sweet PP to maintain it. So in other words, you can spend political power in order to gain influence over a country and then they'll be more likely to give you market access. The second modifier is going to be trade influence. So that's all of those political advisors that give you that trade option for factor, whatever it is that we basically never use, it's not meta. Now those advisors will have impact in the game. So that's kind of cool. Ideological opinion. Some ideologies like other ideologies, more or less. So basically, if you're a different ideology, if you're fascist, you'll be less likely to have an opportunity to trade with like communist ideologies. And finally, competing factions. If two countries are in different factions. So if I I'm in the Axis and you're in the Allies, it's going to be less likely for us to trade with each other on the international market, which makes a lot of sense. Creates blocks of countries that trade with each other, modified by opinion, political power. So that's what trading within factions does, basically. And then you can spend political power to increase the other nation's opinion of your nation, and then perhaps that could sway them to trade with you. Of course, we're going to figure out the details 
details when everything comes out uh, because it's probably not likely that the allies will ever be able to trade with the Axis or the communists to trade with the allies or vice versa unless they're in the same war together. Things like that I'm sure will be scripted in the AI. I want to leave you with the implications of these AI changes and I do feel like they are very impactful on gameplay. There will be a lot more political power sync. In other words, you're going to be able to do a lot more with your political power. So late game, when Germany has a ton of political power stockpiled, they're going to be able to search around and see if they're able to get weaponry from other countries inside of its faction, most likely. It will allow for more uh, use of political power, which has been a problem historically in the game. Trade influence now matters. As I said, those trade deal option modifiers, those advisors may now be impactful in the meta, particularly for miners that are not faction leaders that somehow need to get weaponry and could all of a sudden do that if they get trade advisor all of a sudden. Turn one production efficiency now matters a lot. So what does that mean? Well, turn one in Hearts of Iron 4, every country is producing equipment and the equipment is produced at max efficiency. And you can even add mills to said equipment production lines without penalty. So that production efficiency does not go down. So in essence, if I wanted to sell to other nations, a min-max strat could be just build guns turn one because I'm going to have max production efficiency on those guns. I will then get a stockpile of said guns and I'll be able to produce a lot of them since I have max production efficiency. And then I could trade those guns for sieves if that's what I need. Hint, hint, Germany. Gives the AI a reason to produce more mills and more equipment. AI would stop after surplus is full. So in the DD, uh, they describe that the AI, the AI, after it built up enough equipment, would stop utilizing those mills. I'm not sure if that means that they were, the AI would convert the mills back to sieves, but basically now, instead of the AI reducing the amount of mills they have on certain equipment types, they can simply just sell off the excess. And that makes more sense uh, from a historical perspective. And the last thing that I'm going to leave you with is there's going to be a lot of multiplayer strategies that you can discover. So within your team, you could have a nation like Hungary just build guns turn one and then get one of the trade advisors to then trade with some one off country to then sieve boost itself or other wacky things like that could happen. But basically, there are definitely going to be ways to game this system. I can I can just see it right now. So in my opinion, the Paradox uh, developer team is an excellent team and they do take on a lot, but that's what you guys want. So when the new DLC drops, when we get the update, I am sure that there are going to be things to work out. And when you discover those, go on the Paradox forums and share as much information as you can. My experience has been that the developer team fixes those issues uh, pretty quickly if they can. And if you give them the right information, a lot of change will happen in Hearts of Iron 4 based on this developer diary, a very small one, but a very, very impactful one. If you enjoyed this content, please consider leaving a like and subscribing and I'll see you on the next one.